All right, the f first one, do we have everybody here? Mm -hmm. oh, Randy Carver's here, he's the agent for the, the first okay. two. Come on down, Randy. All right, with that, uh, Kim, would you call the roll, please? Commissioner Candelaria. Here. Commissioner Lindsay. Here. Commissioner Copenhafer. Here. Administrator Anderson. Here. Attorney McLaren. Here. And Kim Purcell, Montezuma County Clerk and Recorder. Notice is hereby given that the Montezuma County Board of County Commissioners will hold a public hearing for the purpose of reviewing and determining recommendations to be made regarding a proposed rezoning application from AGZ to AR 10-34 submitted by Ricky and Melissa Carver Agent Randy Carver on property located at 12684 Highway 491, Cortez, Colorado, consisting of 31.52 acres more or less, located south of Road N, east of Highway 491, situated in Section 9, Township 37 North, Range 16 West, NMPM. The hearing will be held Tuesday, December 5th, 2023 at 9 a.m. in the Commissioner's Hearing Room, Montezuma County Administrative Offices, 109 West Main, Cortez, Colorado. Interested persons may attend and give input. Information may be obtained from the Planning Office online services at https co montezuma co smartgovcommunitycom public home. You may also contact the Planning Department at 970-565-2801 with questions. Dated this 13th day of November 2023, Kim Purcell Clerk, Board of County Commissioners, Montezuma County, Colorado, published in the journal on Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. Okay, thank you, Kim. Um, all right, Don, give us an overview here. Sure. Um, so the, the, the first two of these are uh, tied to the same map. Um, they're looking to have rezoning, but it's only going to be contingent upon a to be presented boundary line adjustment. So Ricky uh, and Melissa Carver have the larger parcels shown there on the uh, east side and they Which are rezoning from AGZ to AR 10 to 34 if the proposed boundary line adjustment is approved because it will take them below 20 acres which is a minimum requirement to stay zoned AGZ. The uh, nothing else is changing on the property they live there they'll still um, farm the ag land um, it's just looking to uh, be rezoned to be in line with the land use code so the 31.52 acres is going to be reduced to the 17.52 Co correct okay and then the 19.51 is going to be included with the 5 and the 14 Right, the five acres would go to 19 and a half. Okay. With, with the boundary line adjustment. I, I don't have anything. I, I know this property. And Question? Commissioner? Um, so is it the way that jog is and the end of that boundary coming across around there is that to m make clearance for buildings or what what is the root <laughs> you, you see what i'm talking about down the little yeah where it juts out the buildings on the yeah. partial so where where the bottom um southeast part of almond's property is just up from that that little jog there <laughs> that will be remedied to um meet the minimum 30 foot setback if I understand that right Randy so that that line will be um, adjusted there in this process because it looks like it comes right up to the right structure into the right middle now. of that little structure okay. correct the south boundary for almonds can't can't be changed but we can rectify the uh, that north that southeast corner Okay, Mr. Carver, do you have anything to add? No. Okay, all right, with so. that then I will open this uh, application up to public comment. Anybody wishing to speak for or against this application, 
Please come forward to the podium, state your name and address for the record prior to providing your comments, and you may address the board at this time. Okay, seeing no public comment, I'll close the public comment session of this application and bring it back to the commissioners, gentlemen. I don't have anything else. Commissioner? Do we need? <laughs> Evidently we do. So this is just a rezoning. Yeah. This is just a rezoning I think he's referring to the first is. two. Yeah. But do we need to do this boundary line thing first? Yes. I mean, because, well, they, they go in conglomeration because if you don't do the, you have to do the boundary line, but then if the boundary line's done, you have to rezone to keep it in compliance. Okay, but we should do the boundary line first. Yeah. But we're in a public hearing now for the first item. Correct. But if the rezoning won't be approved, then the boundary line adjustment probably can't be done. So, Don, correct me if I'm wrong. Is this just a request for rezoning at this point? The yes. boundary line's not in this. I mean, so you can't rezone if you've got a parcel that doesn't fall within the rezoning. You see so what I'm saying? How about I we, mean, how about we continue this in the two things have to go together? We'll, we'll yes. go back. What if we can? Yeah, continue. We're going to continue this until um, <coughs> five minutes from now. Yeah, we're going to continue this at nine fifteen <laughs> on this date. Because I, I agree with Ian. I think we should do this boundary line thing first. Change the boundary line. Then the partials will be right to zone. Correct. Like what we're, what we're going to put it. Is that? Yeah. We have to. Okay. The, the, and I guess I was confused. I thought the boundary line was being done along with this. But without the boundary line adjustment, we can't rezone. Okay. Because we're rezoning to something that. So motion are you guys to, okay? Motion to continue. continue. Till 9.15? Yes. Okay. Gerald. Fine with Second. me. In the past, we've never had to go through just rezoning. When we did a boundary line adjustment, it was understood that you zoned it appropriately or you wouldn't approve the boundary line adjustment. But Ian stated that because we are changing categories within the land use code, that's why we're doing the rezoning applications. Okay. Well, it's been moved and seconded to uh, continue this public hearing until 9.15, today's date. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, it's 9.05 and we're gonna move forward to the boundary line adjustment. Kim, would you call the roll, please? It's just 9.05 is rezoning, rezoning only. Okay, this, this is then just a boundary line adjustment, but it is a public hearing. No, the no, okay. No. So we can just do the boundary line adjustment. Right, yeah. Okay, it's all presented to us, just it's there's all really right nothing there. else to present. They are applying to do a boundary line adjustment to transfer 14 acres on the north to the almonds that live on the west on five and a half acres. And that will leave the carvers with 17 and a half remaining acres out of their 31 acres. No residents will change, no access will change. There will be a slight adjustment at the southeast corner of the almond property to accommodate not going into the end of that existing structure. And that will be reflected on the um, plat and the, and the new deeds if this is approved. Okay. You good? Yes. I move to approve a boundary line adjusted adjustment between Ricky and Melissa Carver on property located at 12684 Highway 491 Cortez consisting of 21.52 acres more or less and Warren and Rhonda Almond on property located at 12898 Highway 491 Cortez, Colorado. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve a boundary line adjustment application submitted by Ricky and Melissa Carver on property located at 12684 Highway 491 Cortez, Colorado, consisting of 21.52 acres more or less. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that, sir, is approved. Thank you.
so we, we've got. So we've now got you can do the 905 public yeah, hearing. Yeah, we can do the 905 public hearing now. Okay, Kim, would you call a roll, please? So this is the, the, second, one. the second one, the 905. <coughs> Commissioner Candelaria. Here. Commissioner Lindsay. Here. Commissioner Copenhafer. Here. Administrator Anderson. Here. Attorney McLaren. Here. Kim Purcell, Montezuma County Clerk and Recorder. Notice is hereby given that the Montezuma County Board of County Commissioners will hold a public hearing for the purpose of reviewing and determining recommendations to be made regarding a proposed rezoning application from AR 3 9 to AR 10 34 submitted by Warren and Rhonda Allman. Agent Randy Carver on property located at 12898 Highway 491, Cortez, Colorado, consisting of 5.51 acres more or less, located south of Road Inn, east of Highway 491, situated in Section 9, Township 37 North, Range 16 West, NMPM. The hearing will be held Tuesday, December 5, 2023, at 9 a.m. in the Commissioner's Hearing Room, Montezuma County Administrative Offices, 109 West Main, Cortez, Colorado. Interested persons may attend and give input. Information may be obtained from the Planning Office online services at https co montezuma co -smart .com, public home. You may also contact the Planning Department at 970-565-2801 with questions. Dated this 13th day of November, 2023, Kim Purcell Clerk, Board of County Commissioners, Montezuma County, Colorado, published in the journal on Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. All right, thank you, Kim. Okay, Don, I'm not sure you need to add anything else to this. <coughs> well, just to clarify, the uh, almonds that now will have 19 and a half acres would like to rezone from AR3 to 9 to AR10 to 34. Okay, Commissioner, question? No. I don't have any. Okay, this is a public hearing and I do have to open this up for public comment. So at this point in time, uh, if you would like to speak for or against this application, please come forward to the podium, state your name and address for the record prior to providing your comments and you may address the board at this time. Okay, seeing no public comment, I'll close the public comment session of this application and bring it back to the commissioners. Gentlemen. I have nothing further. No, I'm fine. I move to approve this proposed rezoning application from AR3 to 9 to AR10 to 34, submitted by Warren and Rhonda Allman on property located at 12898 Highway 491, Cortez, Colorado. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the proposed rezoning application from AR3 through 9 to AR10 through 34, submitted by Warren <coughs> and Rhonda Allman, Agent Randy Carver, on property located at 12898 Highway 491, Cortez, Colorado. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I will close the pub this public hearing, and that is approved. Okay, and it is 915, um, so we will reconvene the public hearing of earlier do I have do I, do I need to have her read the roll again yes <clears throat> okay Kim would you please ro read the role of the first public hearing okay Commissioner Candelaria here Commissioner Lindsay here Commissioner Copenhafer here Administrator Anderson here. and Attorney McLaren here Kim Purcell Montezuma County Clerk and Recorder do you want me to read the whole notice no, this is, this is just a continuation of the hearing that we had earlier, and so the notice does not need to be reread. Okay. All right. So we're good to go. Good. So the um, applicants would like to rezone we got, from... We got as far as opening it up to the public, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah. Let's open it, open it up to a public comment. Yeah. So the Carvers would like to rezone from AGZ to AR 10 to 34 with the change in acreage of their property since they no longer qualify for AGZ status. Okay. Wait, we have to have a public, public comment. Public comment. Right. 
So I will open this up for public comment. Anybody wishing to speak for or against this application, please come forward to the podium. State your name and address for the record. Prior to providing your comments, you may address the board at this time. <coughs> Okay, seeing no public comment, I will close the public comment session of this application and bring it back to the commissioners. Gentlemen. Okay, sir. Well, I don't have nothing else. <laughs> Good. Okay. Yeah. I move to approve this rezoning application from AGZ to AR 10 to 34, submitted by Ricka, Ricky Melissa Carver on property located at 12684 Highway 491 Cortez. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the proposed rezoning application from AGZ to AR 10 through 34, submitted by Ricky and Melissa Carver, Agent Randy Carver, and property located at 12684 Highway 491, Cortez, Colorado, consisting of 31.52 acres, more or less. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, I will close this public hearing we can sign we have a high impact permit for raptor storage that was approved you last bet. week we have mylar for kenneth bradshaw on his subdivision roll them out the way we had it on the agenda um, it was just confusing as a whole <laughs> so. <laughs> this is not your not your usual boundary line adjustment rezoning. So. Mm. How's your wife like in Cortez? Does she like it so far? Good. good. Well, that's great. Yeah. Good. Good. So, well, that's good. Close. I think it's still pretty rough. <laughs> yeah. So we did the Raptor storage, is done. My clock says that it's 920 and we have another public hearing. Do we have uh, Andrew or Danielle? And Andrew is here. Danielle? Okay, would you call the roll please, Kim? Commissioner Candelaria. Here. Commissioner Lindsay. Here. Commissioner Copenhafer. Here. Administrator Anderson. Here. Attorney McLaren. Here. And Kim Purcell, Montezuma County Clerk and Recorder. Notice is hereby given that the Montezuma County Board of County Commissioners will hold a public hearing for review and determination regarding a proposed two lot moderate subdivision application submitted by Andrew and Danielle Lehman on property located at 17593 Highway 145, Dolores, Colorado consisting of 16.93 acres more or less, located east of Highway 184, north of Highway 145, situated in Section 17, Township 37 North, Range 15 West, and MPM. The hearing will be held Tuesday, December 5th, 2023 at 9.20 a.m. in the Commissioner's Hearing Room, Montezuma County Administrative Offices, 109 West Main, Cortez, Colorado. 
Interested persons may attend and give input. Information may be obtained from the Planning Office Online Services at https://montezuma-co.smartgovcommunity.com. <coughs> public home. You may also contact the Planning Department at 970-565-2801 with questions. Dated this 14th day of November 2023, Kim Purcell, Clerk, Board of County Commissioners, Montezuma County, Colorado, published in the journal on Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. All right, thank you, Kim. Okay, Don. <coughs> So the uh, layman's are applying to subdivide their property off of Highway 145. They would like to create a three-acre lot that includes the current residence um, on the southwest corner of the property. And um, that's basically it. There's access off of the highway. Um, they will have to obtain a CDOT access permit. Um, currently, there's a cell tower on the larger portion um, that has a high impact permit, special use permit, um, and the rest of it is uh, vacant besides the, uh, the garage shop building there that you see. Um, conditions from PNZ were an access utility easement through the larger parcel to the the three acre proposed parcel and um, they were uh, unanimous to recommend it for approval. There also will have to be a sign off on Tri-State's um, utility easement that already crosses the property. So um, you said that they have to have obviously a specific access from CDOT off of that parcel? There's currently a, a permit in place. Um, where is at it the, at? The access? Or, I mean, yeah, where's the access? Or where would it be, I guess? Right where it shows there on the map at, at the bottom. Okay. Yeah, this is the only access that I see. And so when the high impact permit, special use permit was approved, CDOT had no comment and said there would be no other uh, requirement on access for this parcel. Um, now they've changed their mind and are requesting an access permit during the subdivision process. And the layman's have applied for that. So then that's where the easement is going to be again across that right. lot one or whatever. Right, because there's, there's no way to access um, <coughs> due to the, the geographical situation there where the house is to have an independent CDOT access up that hill. So the two residents obviously exist right now. Well, it's one residence um, that's in the green, or in the two, three. Two different structures, I guess. Correct. Correct. And so then that three-acre piece that's being broken off, is that just going to be for residential use? No, it will stay commercial. What's the commercial use? It depends on what happens when they sell it. They're proposing so I, I, to build um, to the north there on the on the larger parcel. I guess one issue I see with this is, I mean, when we split this off, we in essence have a three-acre piece of property with nothing other than a residence at this point in time. Currently. That doesn't fit within commercial zoning per our land use code. Unless that residence there is used for a commercial purpose. Well, and so I guess that's the question. I mean, you don't want to create a situation where you've got a residential building that's being used for residential use, and you're now creating a situation where you're creating a three-acre piece of property with a residence. I mean, if that continues to be used as a residence, then you've got a, you've got a situation where that's out of compliance with the land use code. 
And, and so if, that, you, if you rezone that to residential, that will be spot zoning of residential in the middle of nothing but commercial and low density or well, light I, density. I and certainly I certainly understand that, but you're if you have a three acre commercial this. piece, that that's not in line with the land use code. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it will not be able to meet the setback issues because they're different, I, um, residential to commercial. I would be very, very uncomfortable breaking off a three acre piece <clears throat> that's going to be used for residential purposes. I mean, I don't see a commercial use here. And so if you do this, you're creating something that's out of compliance as it sits. Residential is allowed on commercially zoned property. So right now I'm looking at section 3314.3 of the land use code um, and that's uses by right for commercial, commercially zoned property. Um, Give me one second. So you're just, you're, um, well, first of all, let me give you the opportunity to, to say anything if you need to say anything also. I, I don't have any comment. Um, okay. I'm fine, whatever it is, you know, and it cannot be done, it cannot be done. Right. So just on your guys' recommendation or approval. Okay. So, so a conditional use for commercially zoned property our conditional uses include residential or agricultural uses, but those uses are subordinate to the commercial intent of the zone. And so, I mean, I think, I think that what that means is that this has to be intended for commercial use. You can have a residence on a commercially zoned piece of property but it has to be a commercial use of the property. And I don't see that here. Is there That's any commercial use of this? This is strictly just a residence, correct? De define what commercial is for me so I, I know how to speak. I mean, so, so there's, a, there's, there's really a lot of, um, I mean, com a commercial zone allows for the establishment and expansion of uses that are predominantly commercial. And then it's got a whole set of commercial uses, administrative and professional offices, financial services, medical services, retail sales, lumber yards, restaurants, gas stations, um, motels, motor vehicle repair and services. I mean, we're talking business. Yeah, I, I, there's no business license uh, to that address, if, if that helps. So it's strictly a residential Correct. property. I, I mean, I'm the pastor of Dolores Baptist Church, mm -hmm. and my yeah. office is yeah. there, but there's no business address to that property. Right. Okay. So this is to be marketed as a commercial property for sale. I, We're not changing the zoning. It's sitting there commercial as is. Now, how, how that commercial property gets developed, we'll see what the, uh, the buyer's intentions are. I think it creates a really a borderline situation at best because, I mean, what, what we're doing by breaking this off is we're creating a property that at this point in time is out of compliance with the code. Now, maybe in the future, I mean, we can talk about future uses. The residence, we can the residence is allowed in a commercial zone. Correct. Which this is a residence in a commercial zone. How long has it been there? Uh, I think it was 82 when the last time it was divided off. 
but this, <clears throat> but this is creating a new piece of property. Right. And I mean, a use by right is residential use, but it's supposed to be subordinate to, to the, the commercial. commercial zone. And so I don't know. I mean, we're sort of talking in hypotheticals here. I mean, maybe, maybe we have a situation where a buyer comes in and you know sets up some kind of business there. But then if we don't, then what do we have? We've got a place that's that's out of compliance. That's that's the problem we have here. Is it currently out of compliance? No, no. So how how do you take the zoning away for the marketability of a commercial? property right. on a highway that's in the industrial commercial overlay zone just because it is what it is when residential is subordinate so that doesn't prohibit any commercial operation in that residence or another structure being added they already aren't <laughs> getting a lease for the cell tower On the which other is piece not of property, which is on their property, which is a whole different conversation. But I just don't see how you could take their zoning away um, or the marketability of selling that. And it's right in the middle of nothing but commercial light industrial zone area. I think it's a really, I think it's a really unique situation because ultimately, I mean. What you've got here is you've got a big piece of property with a cell tower on it. And so arguably that is commercial use at this point. Mm -hmm. Now when you break it off, I mean, again, we're talking hypotheticals and that's always kind of scary. I mean, are we gonna, is this gonna be used as, as a commercial zone? Is this just gonna stay as a residential place? And, and, and I would hate to set up a situation where <coughs> a buyer comes down the road looking to buy a house and they buy a house and they're living there and then there's no commercial element to that and then all of a sudden we've got something that's violating our code because the residential use is absolutely not subordinate to any sort of commercial use on the property. That's the concern. Now if a buyer comes in and sets up a business there, well great, now we've got something that, that fits with our land use code. But, but we, are, we are really talking hypotheticals, and that's always, that's always dangerous when you talk about approving subdivisions based on, well, the new owner may do this or may not. So for the cell, cell tower to operate, that does not have to be zoned commercial. That's a high impact permit, special use permit only. That can exist on ag land, any, any zoned property. That's so, true, that's true, but that cell tower also arguably would be a commercial use that would make that property compliant as it currently sits. I mean, I understand it's grandfathered in because, because of the way that the land use code came and when it came, but... I think the reality of it okay. is it doesn't fit the code, the, the bare bones language of the code as it currently sits if we break this off. I understand the practical side, I understand the, the reality of it, I understand why it would be important to keep it commercial, but well, as what, it currently sits. What were the conversations sits, at P&D? What, what, I mean, how did they recommend it? I mean, it seems like we're always at a disconnect here anymore with P and Z. P and Z was unanimous for it. They had no issue with issue with it. It's already zoned commercial. It's right there in nothing but commercial. It's in the industrial commercial overlay zone. Based on everything that's been happening in the past, we're not gonna get property zoned commercial very easily. So I don't see how 
even though it is a conditional use, it's still a use granted by the land use code. You can take the zoning away from this property because commercial property um, sold on a highway is worth a whole lot more than just a residence that's zoned AR3 to 9 in the middle of uh, commercial operations. <coughs> I guess I guess the ca I guess the caveat's this: if somebody buys it and begins to use it commercially, and that residence is subordinate, everything will be fine. And if not, if not, then we've got an out of compliance piece of property. Okay. Well, I will then open this uh, application up for public comment. Anybody wishing to speak for or against this application, please come forward to the podium. State your name and address for the record prior to providing your comments, and you may address the board at this time. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mike Lynch. I live at 21730 County Road S. Um, I also need to disclose that I'm a PNZ commissioner and uh, I was in attendance at the meeting. This was approved by the PNZ commission and I voted for this, um, this change. Uh, I want to thank the county attorney for pointing out um, some of the finer points of the land use code, which I I did not understand before, and I don't know if the other commissioners <coughs> understood um, the point that the attorney is making, but I really appreciate his comments during these um, sessions. I know it's his job to protect the commissioners, and he has to do that, but I also want to let it be known that the PNZ commissioners, as I understand it, do not have access to um, the county attorney for such questions as these and we just have to go off of our best information and understanding of the land use code so this um, process this morning brings to light some additional questions for the PNZ Commission to consider in the future and that's all I have to say thanks thank you Next. <coughs> Good morning. My name is Alan Mays. I live out at Lewis, 21693, County Road 21. Um, I don't have anything uh, uh, as just looking at that uh, uh, a question of if it is commercial, it's commercial. But if you split that piece off, uh, has there been arrangements for a easement off of that road to that property? Because that property sits all by itself, and and I think uh, my personal feeling is is that if this property stays uh, divided, uh, then whoever buys this property is going to have to come before the commissioners and make their case be known as to what they're going to do with that property. Otherwise, I do agree. I, there there are questions that are coming to you guys, and you're you're questioning yourselves and and why did it come before you and so I think it's a little premature that uh, you guys are discussing this without all of the information I have to agree with uh, the attorney uh, the person that spoke before there's information that they weren't using and maybe this should be uh, held until more things are looked at so thank you very much <clears throat> next Okay, seeing no further public comment, I'm gonna close the public comment session of this application and I will bring it back to the commissioner, gentlemen. Everything here. We have. We have so many of these commercial properties that have residences on them. I mean, to me, I don't, I guess I'm, I don't see where that's a problem that that residence is on commercial property. To me, if the people come in there and and want to buy this and actually put a commercial business there, they may tear that residence down. They may build a whole new building. I, I mean, I I guess I, I don't see that. <coughs> I don't see where that's a big issue to me. 
I, I mean, think to me, it's. I think what Ian is telling us it, it, it is potentially that could happen. But what we're doing right now, if we accept this, is we. The way the interpretation that you interpret it to us is that we are actually approving an out of compliance subdivision at this point in time. Could it be subordinate to a commercial use? Yes. Is, is it? I, I get that, but. What you're saying right now is if this is approved the way it sits, it would be out of compliance with the land use code. Based on, on based on 3314.4 subsection C, um, it says residential or agricultural uses are allowed in a commercial zone, but are subordinate to the commercial intent of the zone. That's what the code says. I may be oversimplifying it, but we've got a proposed two lot one moderate subdivision application. These people want to cut this piece in half and he wants to live on part of it. And that's it. It's all commercial still. It didn't change the zoning. That's the way I viewed it. I would so move we approve a proposed two lot moderate subdivision application submitted by Andrew and Danielle Lawman on property located at 17593 Highway 145 Dolores. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept a proposed two lot moderate subdivision application submitted by Andrew and Danielle Lyman. Uh, on property located at 17593 Highway 145 Dolores, Colorado, consisting of 16.93 acres more or less. Is there any further discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. You have passed, sir. You are approved. And I will close this public hearing. Okay, uh, next one is our 9.30 public hearing. Um, do we have the applicant here with us? Okay. This is uh, Eric Ireland. He's the he's, uh, agent for Braden okay. Jones. All right, very good. Kim, would you uh, call the roll, please? Commissioner Candelaria. Here. Commissioner Lindsay. Here. Commissioner Copenhaver. Here. Administrator Anderson. Here. Attorney McLaren. Here. Kim Purcell, Montezuma County Clerk and Recorder. Notice is hereby given that the Montezuma County Board of County Commissioners will hold a public hearing for review and determination regarding a proposed four lot moderate subdivision and AR 3-9 and AR 10-34 rezoning application submitted by Braden Jones on property located at 38511 Road H, Mancus, Colorado, consisting of 26.29 acres, more or less, located east of Highway 160, north of Road H, situated in Section 36, Township 36, North Range, in 14, West, NMPM. <coughs> the hearing will be held Tuesday, December 5th, 2023, at 9.30 a.m. in the Commissioner's Hearing Room, Montezuma County Administrative Offices, 109 West Main, Cortez, Colorado. Interested persons may attend and give input, Information may be obtained from the Planning Office online services at https co montezuma cosmartgovcommunitycom public home. You may also contact the Planning Department at 970-565-2801 with questions. Dated this 14th day of November, 2023, Kim Purcell Clerk, Board of County Commissioners, Montezuma County, Colorado, published in the journal on Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. Thank you, Kim. All right, Don, would you give us an overview on this one? Uh, yes, yeah, so Mr. Z Jones is the owner uh, residence there on the, uh, the <coughs> west side of the property, and he is proposing to subdivide um, the property into four lots. Uh, he would remain in the residence on the 12 and a half acres. Then there's a, f a four and a half to the north, five acre to the east, and a four acre in the middle.
the rezoning would be 10 to 34 on his lot and AR 3 to 9 on the three smaller lots. Okay. Would you like to add anything, Mr. Ireland? Okay. Commissioners, question? No. Discussion no. on water. I don't have anything right now. Okay. okay. Well, then I'll open this up for public comment. Anybody wishing to speak for or against this application, please come forward, state your name and address for the record, and you may address the board at this time. Um, we kind of surveyed the neighbors, and um, this is a, a historic ranch property. Been in the family for about three generations before Braden purchased it. And um, our our end of, of Mancus, that um, it's quiet, it's all agricultural, and um, there's virtually no light pollution, um, and we're just concerned about having a bunch of other residences built in a primarily ag area. Um, all of the properties here surrounding it are used for agricultural, and um, so it's not really a subdivision type neighborhood. And um, so these are all the people in red that surround the property that are opposing this um, because we'd like it to remain um, large and agricultural. Um, we don't know if there is um, water taps available. So um, that might also be a concern for developing this property as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Wesley Rivera, 38626, County Road H, Macus, Colorado. And I realize that we probably have no hope of this not passing, so I would ask that the new neighbors at least consider the keeping the integrity and the culture of our neighborhood because we're very quiet over there. And I just was floored when they said this subdivision they want to make our agricultural area subdivision i'm located my land is directly across the street so whatever he builds will be my view so i just hope that it's reasonable thank you thank you anybody else Okay, with that, I'll close the public comment session of this application, and I will bring it back to the commissioners, gentlemen. I know that one concern that we've talked about in the past, so, specifically in the Mancus areas. Go ahead. So, I mean, really, for, for these things, what you're looking at, you have to have utilities that are available to, to support the use, okay. and you've also got to find that no significant adverse impacts will be created by either the zoning change or, or the subdivision itself. So, so as far as utilities, I guess my that question were yeah. the utilities because this is in the Mancus area. The Mancus rural water um, is d does have a um, from from hearings in the past. They are very deficient with their supply. So have the taps been purchased for these four or I guess the additional three properties? We have been in contact with Mancus rural water and we are approved for a tap pending today's decision. A tap for all of the for the southeast lot that's the only one that's has a plan to be developed at this time so i cor correct but so the subdivision <clears throat> to approve a subdivision it has to have water available for <coughs> all of the lots mm -hmm. so if if, <clears throat> if they supply one tap and they don't have two other taps and we're supplying or cr we're creating a subdivision of four lots with only two taps available. So I, I guess the question just simply is, is there water available, water taps available for the additional three lots? So I've definitely acquired the one for the southeast. I know there are other water taps available currently or, or for sale in the area. Okay, what, did they respond at all? 
make us roll water? Um, Jane, I'll let you answer that on the correspondence you had. I, I spoke with Montezuma, uh, make us roll water uh, on the telephone, and um, they said that there would be no problem with having additional water taps, but um, they were not aware at that time that um, Mr. Ireland had um, approved, been approved for water taps, but he <coughs> looked into it and he was approved for water taps. For the one. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, he just told me water taps. He didn't say if it was more than one. Correct. And the um, easement is a 60 foot right of way. Correct. That, okay. that is an access utility easement so that it will serve all three subdivision lots. Um, the current status is Mr. Ireland is looking to purchase one lot. Um, Mr. Jones is staying where he's at. Mm -hmm. And currently they are indicating they don't intend on selling the other two lots or other than maybe one to Mr. Ireland just so he has um, that that ag land open space. I know we don't have oversight on it, but there will be um, shares of water available for each of these lots. Uh, we don't have the uh, description definition. I believe there's 10 shares. Um, and to go back to this property, every single lot around this property is in a subdivision. Um, the, th the two lots to the east were created with two single lot developments from the uh, previous owner. They also split off the property to the north across the highway. Um, so this was a, maybe a historic farm, but it's been split off three times that I'm aware of. And uh, like I say, every other parcel, except for the end of uh, a 40 acre parcel is like a 10 or less acre property. So it's been subdivided off. It's all AR. It's all AR. Okay. I'm, I'm concerned about the water and I, and I think it's important to get a firm, a firm answer one way or the other. Cause I didn't, I mean, it doesn't sound like the water company said, yes, we have four taps. It sounds like there's taps available. I don't know what that means. Um, you know, it may it says be that there was taps available. One hasn't been approved already for the for the one new resident. So they specifically said taps were available to support all of the the pieces of property. They said, they said taps were available for the property. They didn't say the lots. They just said property but one has been approved already. So I think, I think yeah. without that clarification, I think it's hard to make a finding that <coughs> utilities are available to support the proposed use. Um, it doesn't mean that they're not available, it just means I think we need to <coughs> get exact clarification. I mean, we've got multiple lots here. Um, the water company should clarify, yes, we can support each of these lots. The other condition <coughs> or can be made available, correct? Yes. And Mangus is currently um, proposing to the state another water storage tank to increase their water storage and supplies. So, so made available in the future could be more storage capacity by Mangus Rural Water, along with even upsizing the line in that area to feed future residences because um, currently only one is, is being proposed from the current owner. So I don't, I don't think that's what the land use code means. If, if <laughs> there may be additional storage facilities put in the future, then maybe there will be water available. Um, I mean, it either is available right now as the property sits or it can be made available right now. That's, right. that's what it means. And so I, I, it, I would It could not. be simple as upsizing that line, and I don't know from where, but... Any other questions, gentlemen? You know, we've come to a point where I think Mancus Rural Water needs to clarify if adequate water supply is available to these lots. 
because I mean we've heard that they go from that there's no water available all of a sudden they have taps available and you just don't it's same as the cistern conversation you can't right you can't guarantee all cisterns in the Mancus Valley are going to get water from the Mancus water dock That's well true. actually they they've actually told us that they they are they are to a point right now of cutting it off if you're not residing within the correct the township of Mancus they are not going to they haven't done that yet but they are basically at that point and they have correct they have told us for everything around the county that so, the cisterns are not yeah. going to be supported. so I mean so, anybody can put in a cistern and haul sure. water from any water dock <clears throat> in the county or La Plata County I mean I understand Mancus's scenario but you know that's water is available and can be made available um, what was planning zoning's recommendation they were uh, unanimous to recommend it for approval and so another i mean another option before you guys today you certainly could continue this for the purpose of receiving information from Mancus Rural Water as to whether there's water available to support this. I mean, that just because we don't know the answer to that doesn't necessarily mean that, has, that this has to be denied today. So I really can't take it at this point in time because of we're actually in a public hearing so I appreciate that. Um, I mean, we, we can continue it, make a phone call to make sure water and establish, do you have the water available for these four lots? Or, or we could ask you, Mr. Ireland, to make that phone call to get that um, certification that we do have it. Because our concern and, and make us is this this big concern that we have that that sits in the county is that they they don't have enough natural resource of the water available and or maybe the pipe sizing or whatever the situation may be but their restriction in water over there is is uh, significant so um, really those are our choices for today we can deny it we can continue it uh, we can make a phone call I would prefer we continue it till we get clarification <coughs> that's Gerald I I think that would be the best thing to do because otherwise as far as I would otherwise I would only become uh, yeah I mean otherwise I think you, all you could do is approve that one lot yeah I mean and not do those other two until we find out whether there's actually water available or not so then it would basically take it to a two lot subdivision instead of a four so why don't we go ahead and continue this is this what that's kind of what yeah. I'm hearing um, do you have a day and it can be quick because um, I think is all we need is one phone call to be made and to actually get the information that we have to have we can do it the 12th next week yeah Does that work yeah. And, and what I would suggest is, is getting a letter from Mancus Rural Water um, signed by them just saying that it's available. I mean, that's, that's going to be the very best evidence we have, um, and, and it's going to sure things up for you if they do have water. And if they don't have water, then, I mean, then obviously we're in a different boat. But having it in writing is always preferable because then we're not in a he said, she said. I mean, if they produce a letter and they say, hey, it's available, then we know and no doubt. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're so why don't one. why yeah. don't we do this to uh, the 19th <clears throat> that's fine so that if they have to go do some field checks we, them we allow time. them that amount of time okay. we, we continue this hearing until uh, December the 19th 2023 second you have a time same time 9 a.m. it would be 9 10 9 10 so I, I would recommend not setting it at 9.10. I mean, I think, I think it would be safe to set it at 10.30 um, that morning. I mean, there's no point in setting a 10-minute increment when we know that the public hearing beforehand is going to go 
for longer than 10 minutes because then everybody's just sitting here. You mean 9.30? 10 o'clock. I, I, I anticipate that public hearing will go longer than an hour, but I if you guys want to be safe. Nine, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. Okay. It has been moved and seconded to continue this public hearing until 12, 19, 23 at 10 a.m. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. That's all we need is just a letter saying that there's actually taps for Understood. that property. I'll okay. See what I can do. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. I am. We're still behind. Yes. That's all right. Okay. Uh, we have a please, Kim. Commissioner Candelaria. Here. Commissioner Lindsay. Here. Commissioner Copenhaver. Here. Administrator Anderson. Here. Attorney McLaren. Here. Kim Purcell, Montezuma County Clerk and Recorder. Notice is hereby given that the Montezuma County Board of County Commissioners will hold a public hearing for review and determination regarding a proposed high impact permit application submitted by Maverick Inc. Agent Todd Myers located at 7255 Highway 160 491 Cortez, Colorado consisting of 10 acres more or less located west of Highway 160-491 north of Road G, situated in Section 4, Township 35 North, Range 16 West, NPM. The hearing will be held Tuesday, December 5th, 2023 at 9.40 a.m. in the Commissioner's Hearing Room, Montezuma County Administrative Offices, 109 West Main, Cortez, Colorado. Interested persons may attend and give input. Information may be obtained from the Planning Office Online Services at https://montezuma-co.smartgovcommunity.com. Public home. You may also contact the Planning Department at 970-565-2801 with questions. Dated this 15th day on November 2023, Kim Purcell, Clerk, Board of County Commissioners, Montezuma County, Colorado, published in the journal on Wednesday, November 22nd, 2023. Great. You want to go ahead and start, Don? Sure. So uh, this is Matt Ryder. He's the uh, agent for Maverick Incorporated. Maverick is applying for a high impact permit for the uh, property just northwest uh, opposite the highway from Loves on Highway 491-160. Um, they are proposing their... Uh, pretty standard typical gas station convenience store on the west side of the highway. Um, they have been in contact with CDOT. Um, their engineer is working with CDOT's engineers. They have a preliminary proposal and plan that CDOT is reviewing for access on the north end of the property. Um, they've been in touch with Empire Electric there's an intersection of power lines that meets right in that uh, driveway entrance. Um, so they, they are working out an arrangement for relocation, underground, burial, anyway, a plan to take care of that issue. And this driveway is being aligned with road G.2 to the east, which uh, is the corner there where G. Willick or liquor store is. Okay. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Sure. Uh, Matt Ryder, do I have to give address? And no. Okay. Uh, so I was in attendance at the Planning and Zoning Commission, and there was a few concerns brought up by public comment that I would like to address. Uh, the first one is water capacity in the main line that we would propose to connect to. Our engineer has met with the water district number one and has received approval. And we are in process of preparing final construction drawings. So we did receive uh, permission from them and uh, proof of water availability for our connection. Um, the second uh, item that was brought up was congestion in the area. And what I'd like to do, I could see on your Adobe tabs, you've got a few exhibits. And if we can go to EX overall, I'll help. And then possibly zoom in, make it a little bit b 
bigger for the public. But basically what we have is a plan view uh, showing our proposed improvements to the CDOT right-of-way. Uh, so we have already applied for um, access permit approval with CDOT and we've received comments back from CDOT regarding our plans and currently they are preliminarily approved. Uh, we still have to apply for an encroachment permit and or permission to construct. But as you can see with the red lines, we are proposing some restriping of the right of way. It would pr uh, provide a deceleration lane into our site and acceleration lane out of our site, uh, a turn pocket for either direction, and then of course uh, your standard pass through uh, lanes. So we believe that uh, based off of CDOT comments and working with them that we have provided a plan that will alleviate our impact to the existing condition of Highway 160 and 491 at that intersection. Uh, the third item that I wanted to bring up was privacy and glare. And if we go <coughs> to the C200 site plan, uh, that will give a, a better depiction. So at the north end of our property line, we are proposing a chain link fence with privacy slats inserted in them and then additional trees uh, along that driveway. And our, our purpose for that is to uh, block the, the glare of oncoming vehicles, you know, as they go to exit our uh, driveways there. Um, a six foot fence plus the uh, vegetation provided by the trees would block the glare of, of our traffic. And then the, the fence again is to provide privacy to our neighbors. Uh, we are still providing uh, openings for the two existing dr uh, driveway accesses from our neighbors to the north. And we've provided enough like 10 feet on either side of those driveways to allow for plenty of uh, room for our neighbors to you know, drive whatever uh, equipment implements they need and have enough turning radius for that. And then the fourth item and the last item that uh, was brought up that I took note is uh, regarding flooding and stormwater. So there's, um, at the time of the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, there was concern because uh, existing flooding happens on the property and along the CDOT right-of-way and so uh, what Maverick has done, and if we pop back to EX1 overall um, and kind of zoom into the frontage, well, we've added an additional bioswell, stormwater storage capacity along the front of our property. And that's to capture um, additional runoff from the road that causes uh, the increased flooding along the property. Additionally, um, I believe Don and my civil engineer both met on site with uh, CDOT maintenance crews and they are working on uh, cleaning up the culverts that were blocked that have created flooding issue. So uh, I hope that um, you know these revised plans and my comments here have helped alleviate concerns brought up by the community. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, one added note is they have been adopted into the sanitation district. <coughs> they okay. will have their uh, <coughs> their sanitary line cross under the highway and tie into the line running from Loves to the plant. And they have been adopted. So into, all the wastewater is going to go to the sanitation district. Correct. Oh. Their stormwater runoff. They will have a detention basin on the west as well as the south to contain all the runoff water on their site um like matt spoke of the drainage from c dots right away on the very south end of the property is outside this scope of the project <coughs> and hopefully that will be alleviated with c dots engineering they started on this project i guess last summer Hopefully their plan is to get all the water to drain to McKelmo, but they're trying to figure out with utilities <coughs> in the right of ways what's what's their best course of action. So rather that 
CDOT takes care of that or not, um, it won't affect this property. And they won't be diverting any water off their property to any other properties. Okay. Commissioner's question? No. This time? No, not right now. Okay. Well, then I will open this application up for public comment. Anybody wishing to speak for or against this application, please come forward to the podium, state your name and address for the record, and you may address the board at this time. <coughs> Yeah, I'm Hardy Tozier. I live at 7353 Highway 491-160. I'm the adjoining property just to the north. Um, a lot of the stuff that, that we did bring up, I, I was at the planning and zoning meeting, and, and they, they have addressed some of the questions. I appreciate that from, from the planning and zoning meeting. One thing that I, that I have been thinking about since then, though, is... For one, I, di I didn't know really how a store like this could operate just with one entrance and exit. Um, I, I didn't know for sure why to try to alleviate some of the traffic on the on the one, because most of the traffic coming into this store is going to be southbound traffic probably, why they don't go ahead and try to see about putting in an exit on the south side of the property to, to exit to go south back onto the highway to eliminate... Um, some of that some of that congestion um we we have an easement to use that that same entrance with our property um the neighbor that lives right back to the west of us has that's his main driveway right there also um and then the neighbors just on the north side of me they have an easement to use that that as a driveway as well um so there's there and right now as it is i mean sometimes sometimes i'll set there for five to eight minutes at a time to try to get turned to the left to come like towards Cortez. It's the, and I, I understand getting the other lanes in and stuff will help, but you still have to turn in front of the southbound traffic to try to get out there. Um, but I was, I was just wondering if, if that was ever a possibility of trying to do some other kind of a, an exit to try to eliminate some of the traffic at the north end of the property there. Um, and then on the the other deal as far as the i mean the the water not not the shed water off of that property itself but that that deal out in front with the i just i don't want that to get just kicked down the road to c dot or whatever I'd, I'd like to try to keep we've been trying to follow up with c dot for the last two years on the water retention right there in that right away and it's it's created a uh, just a mosquito infested swamp right there in the front of that on the highway right there and then whenever it overflows out of that it comes right up and then it goes directly down that driveway right there and and heads to the west and i don't know i mean i don't know what's gonna what exactly is gonna take place i just i do know that if if anybody goes there whenever water is draining off then you'll you'll see where the water's wanting to go and and it's it's kind of it just it just hits that driveway and just just heads right down it um to the right there to the west um i think we'd uh they had kind of covered um a lot of the the issues and the the concerns that we had on the on the fencing the uh the maverick store on the east side of town has got so many i didn't know if they had any plans of doing that with all of the the curbs and the center medians and stuff like trying to enter the maverick down there or not because i know like i i pull into the maverick out here on the east side of town with a semi and it's it's impossible to pull in there without without almost running into oncoming traffic you can't get pulled out of there to continue going east without going out onto the to the other street by the southwest high school or the open school there so i just wanted to make sure that there wasn't going to be like on that that driveway going in and out of there that there wouldn't be those little center medians or or anything like that there okay so your time is up sir thank you next
All right, seeing no further public comment, I'll close the public comment session of this uh, application and I will bring it back to you. You do have the opportunity to address any of those uh, comments if you would like. Sure, yeah, um, might be a little out of order. Going with the s additional concern regarding stormwater, um, this plan, it's hard to see from back there, but we have yellow line work. That represents our stormwater catch basins in the piping underneath our asphalt pavement. Um, if we zoom out a little bit, but go to the west, so plan, top of the plan, uh, we're going to show where we stop our, our pavement and it goes back to existing condition for uh, the neighbor to the west. What we do have uh, is yellow line work depicting, showing our catch basin and then it uh, conveying the stormwater into that stormwater pond to the west. So what I believe will happen is if there is a overflow uh, along the frontage that has the water uh, traveling to the west, we're going to catch it just by the way our grading and, and pavement design is and divert it into the catch basin. Now, beyond the pavement, between the pavement and the property line, it will remain existing condition. Uh, but I, I feel that uh, our improvements uh, during construction will help alleviate that. Uh, the other concern regarding an additional access point, I think that's a great idea. We did do a pre-app with CDOT before um, preparing our, our civil drawings. As you can see, there's an existing median in Highway 160, and Maverick is going to be leasing this lot anyway from our um, from the property owner. And so there's uh, a, a limitation based off of our lease agreement on the size of area we occupy. I can't speak to what the landlord will do with the future. Uh, remaining undeveloped property, uh, but potentially there would be an access point when he develops and uh, possibly a, a connection with our site. But for now, uh, the way our plan is, is we are allowed <coughs> one access point. It has to be aligned with G.2 Road. And so because we have commercial and passenger vehicles, we decided to basically create a, a long road driveway over the existing access easement and it separates our passenger vehicles so they can pull into the front forecourt and then our commercial vehicles that could pull into the RV slash high flow canopy located in the back. Um, now with concerns regarding uh, the time it takes to turn out, yes, uh, possibly there is going to be some weight we believe that the driveway length along the north will allow queuing and so a, a stacking of both neighbors and our customers to, to turn out of the driveway as proposed. Um, yeah, we're, we're limited to the way CDOT uh, plans and regulations go and, and their review, uh, but I, I do believe that based off of their analysis and our traffic impact study provided that we're in compliance with all codes and standards. So, um, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Commissioner's questions? If any. So these other right-of-ways as far as to the to those re that residence in the back and to the Mr. Tozier property there to the north, um, How wide are those, and and where? I guess where is the old road that was there? Is that? Looks like it's right over it. If you look at the if you look at the map, the overlay, you can see the old road is very. Can you see that old road right there? At the top of the page, that road is indicated past the asphalt. Do you see it? So it's quite a bit. So their property, the, the property back behind you, is going to go clear through your parking lot and out the back back onto the old road? Right, we, we wouldn't consider the north portion of our property, the parking lot, just driveway. And because there's existing access easements in place, uh, our, you know, 
hopefully it's it's nice that it's it's paved for our neighbors uh, but of course they will be able to continue accessing their property as usual I don't recall the widths of the two access points shown to the north um, I think we've drawn them to meet the aerial imagery in existing condition and then we've given even additional room with the way we install our fence uh, in case they want to uh, improve their driveways any further or you know if they want to install a gate whatever they want to do uh, hopefully we've allowed some flexibility so I'm gonna guess because you have three looking at the front you have a, a right turn a left turn and then an access through probably 12 feet in width probably 36 feet I mean I would I would venture to say does that sound about right um, Where's that? Right here, as you look, yeah, you've got places for people to stop. So, overall. oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. So I would say a minimum of thirty-six. Yeah. If you go back to C two hundred, we have a dimension on there. Oh yeah, there you go. So it's it's pretty big, bigger than I thought. I have one concern about the access to the other property owners. They be marked and you know and also no parking so nobody blocks those entrances um i'll have to take a look at our proposed signage plan okay. uh, we do have signage around our exterior of our asphalt that says no parking we're not really a, we're not a truck stop right. so our our customer base is to pull in fuel up go into the C store, come out and, and exit. So we do plan on installing no parking signs around the perimeter of our property. Um, I certainly can okay. increase it so it has it along um, the north curb and gutter before the trees, sure. just letting people I mean, know not to park and block just, our neighbors. Just, there's nothing just else access. for emergency access, you know, in case there's a problem back in there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, uh, certainly can provide provisions to prevent blocking of existing <coughs> driveway access points. The property to the west, this is the only one that it's a primary access. The properties to the north, okay. they have access up by their residences. Okay. This is secondary um, out of their south end of the property. Do, th do you already have a design for your retention ponds where you're going to hold that water? Yes. Yes, we do. So the existing overall plan, it, it, it shows where the locations are. It doesn't go into fine detail on that plan because we're trying to give an overview. Uh, but, yes, we, we have that drainage plan in place. So you have four detention ponds on this site, if I saw that correctly, weren't right? Uh, I guess I believe three. Three, three. Okay. Yeah. one on the west, one on the south, and then what they're proposing yeah. along C dots right, right away. Yeah. yeah. C dots. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Do you? What about the issue that he brought up about the curb and gutter as far as turning in there? Are you planning that or not? Or did you answer that? I so, you, you know, commercial vehicles are, are bread and butter. And so our <laughs> prototype is to uh, design. We always go in with uh, the no, best radius, turning radius for commercial vehicles. We want the widest driveway we can get. We, we ask for 50. Um, they did not allow that um, so we're down to 45 but it is consideration it's a consideration and in, in every site plan we draft is to make sure that it's a it's easy to turn in into right. our site and exit right. our site I know yeah. the one out on 145 the access to Maverick off 145 uh -huh. has that little island in there tough to hit for some of them big RVs yep 
No, it's easy to New hit. Island, though, right? Yeah, it's easy. No, to hit. they no. hit it every time. Uh, that's exactly right. It's <laughs> easy to hit. Yeah, we asked to not have pork chops and islands in our driveways, we but we it's are not depicted at sometimes this point the jurisdictions so no. require it. It's I not just there. wanted to make sure that it wasn't. So, guys, just for the record, the findings you have to make, <coughs> proposed use has to be in conformity with the code. The proposed use shall not generate any significant adverse impacts on other property in the area and is consistent with this code. Public utilities and services are available or couldn't be made available to support uses consistent with the proposed zoning. If the applicant fails to um, meet the criteria, then the permit can be approved with conditions that in ensure compliance with the criteria. And then obviously the validity of any permit is contingent on continued compliance with the conditions. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'd so move we approve the proposed high impact permit application submitted by Maverick Inc. Agent Todd Myers located at 7255 High one, Highway 16491 <coughs> Cortez with all contingencies to be met, and um, you want to I won't throw that in. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the proposed high impact permit application submitted by Maverick Incorporated, Agent Todd Myers, located at 7255 Highway 16491, Cortez, Colorado, consisting of 10 acres more or less, located west of Highway 16491. Um, with the contingencies, what were the contingencies? Uh, they've met all in uh, CDOT contingencies, water, power, which they've explained they, they have they've, they've met them all. Yes. So, okay. Oh. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. You have been approved, sir. This uh, public hearing is closed. Okay, you have one more. One more. <clears throat> Last one. We are requesting um, reappointments and appointments to the Planning and Zoning Commission. We would like to uh, recommend, and she has applied uh, Haley Saunders to be reappointed for another three year term. Ted Neergaard is currently the alternate, and he would like to be appointed as a regular member and to continue his term um, for the next two years that would complete his three-year term to uh, 2025. Well, I guess that would be a two-year term on the uh, regular commission appointment. And then Mike Doyle, who was the first off of our list, um, Zach Farian has um, indicated he does not request to continue on PNZ. And so we are uh, requesting Mike Doyle be appointed as the new alternate. And that would be a one-year one term so that we can keep our uh, commission at uh, spread out to two and two. Okay. Question? No. Okay. Cheryl? I move we reappoint Haley Saunders to a three-year term on the planning commission. Do you want to do each one of them individually or all together? I'd just, I'd just do them all. Do them all. Okay. And to appoint the alternate Ted Neergaard to the regular Planning Commission board membership and move Mike Doyle from the board down to the alternate at this time. Second. It's been moved and seconded to reappoint Haley Saunders to a three year term, to appoint Ted Neergaard from the alternate to regular Planning and Zoning Commission to a two year term and to appoint Mike Doyle as a Planning Zoning Commission board member alternate to a one-year term. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, sir. 
Thank you. All right. I don't see anything else. Do you have anything else for us? I hope not. <laughs> not today. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Probably about two weeks. Huh? Yeah. Two weeks. Okay. Now, um, let's see. We are now in um, public comment. the board meeting's public comment session. So the Board of Montezuma County Commissioners welcomes you to this meeting. Person speaking during public comment will be limited to three minutes. Or depending on the number of people wishing to speak, it may be reduced to allow all members of the public the opportunity to address the board. When addressing the board, please state your name and address for the record prior to providing your comments. Comments to individual supervisors or staff are not permitted, and participants may not yield their time to others. And with that, the public comment session is open. Uh, thank you. My name is Alan Mays, 21693 County Road 21, Lewis, Colorado. Um, first comment is about the planning uh, uh, portion of your meeting today. It was a little complicated. Uh, you guys have a tough job to have to deal with, with things. Um, I do wish the one that was a commercial uh, subdivision had been continued, but that's just my opinion um, because it was complicated. One, one uh, I, I don't know if there was a, a reason given for why there wasn't a commissioner meeting last week. It doesn't really matter. I know you have uh, ability to not have meetings. And so if that was just one of those things, I know you're in budget uh, mode right now uh, with all the departments. And I do hope that there will be a public hearing uh, telling the public what is happening with the budget uh, once all of those are set. Uh, something that came up in, in some reading that I did, uh, sounds like across the state of Colorado, county commissions have uh, agreed to an agreement with the um, uh, Department of Local Affairs to do some, uh, 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 what's, what's the word, affordable housing. Uh, and in, on that list, uh, something that I would like you to look into so we can uh, address the citizens, let them know what's going on. There were 300 and some units agreed to by Montezuma County to be constructed uh, through through this uh, agreement with DOLA. And so if you could um, look that up and explain that to the uh, citizens of the county, that would be great. City of Cortez has some uh, units. Um, RICO has six units, things like that. So uh, if there was an agreement, uh, when was that made? How was that made? And when is that going to be made um, public? So anyway, thank you very much. Next. Okay, seeing no further public comment, I'm gonna close the public comment session of this and we are going to uh, go into an executive session. Right. I so move we go into executive session for conference with the attorney for the purpose of receiving legal advice on a specific legal, legal question under CRS section 24-6-402, parentheses four, parentheses B. Second. So moved and seconded to go into an executive session for a conference with the attorney for the purpose of receiving legal advice on specific legal questions under CRS section 24-6-402, parentheses four, parentheses B. Included in that session, will be our clerk and recorder, Ms. Purcell, Commissioners Copenhaver, Candelaria, Lindsay, Attorney McLaren, and Administrator Anderson. And we'll also have our grant writer, Robert Dobry, and our finance manager, Phaedra Grubbs. Uh, the purpose of the executive session will uh, to be discussed, to discuss specific legal questions re related to contracts with NRCS and individual landowners for free at a fight removal. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Gentlemen. No, I move we sign the agreement with Carol L. Tibbetts and Montezuma County for the use of the Tozier gravel pit. Second. 
Been moved and seconded to sign the agreement between Montezuma County and Carroll Tibbetts for the use of the 17 acres for us to store our aggregate uh, down County Road G. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next, um, we had a discussion yesterday in our workshop um, as it pertained to a planning grant um, that was presented by Mr. Dobry for a capital improvement project for a county courthouse that's located over by the combined courts and the sheriff's office. Um, we did, I think, the direction that we talked about yesterday was to look at it to see what, what we could or could not do with that, and that planning grant does come from DOLA. Questions or comments on that? No. That's not it. I would so move we go ahead and sign the uh, application for the planning grant for improvements to the Montezuma County Courthouse combined court area. Second. Been moved and seconded to uh, move forward with the decision for the planning grant for the capital improvement um, county courthouse planning grant. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Noxious Weed Grant Cost Shared Decision. Do you want to elaborate on this one, Ian, or, um, or I can go ahead and do it? Basically, we have a, a cost share program that we have right now. Um, we have budgeted uh, $10,000. Um, uh, the, the grant is a one-to-one -one grant, so if we budgeted 10000 the grant would be another 10000 so we would have an, uh, $20,000 that we could function and move forward with our cost share program. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So we need to, I guess we, it, we need it's to just to move forward move, with move the grant. Ahead. Yeah, the cost share grant. Okay. I move that we move forward with the cost share grant for the noxious weed program uh, in the amount of $10,000. would be $10,000. Second. Then moved and seconded to move forward with the cost share grant um, application in the amount of $10,000 for the noxious weed program. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, uh, I am going to go by the decision as it relates to remote work. We're gonna leave that within the uh, purview of uh, our staff administration. It's not gonna be a decision made by the BOCC at this meeting today. Right. Um, we did have a presentation yesterday uh, by the sheriff, which uh, was a criminal justice grant. Um, which I don't have that in front of me, but it was about in the amount of about $92,000. Oh, there right. it is, right here. $93,482 um, to purchase equipment for the Sheriff's Department. I think it was specifically the radar detectors and radios. It was for radios. Radios, yeah, radios. Yeah, radios and radar. Any questions, gentlemen? No. Okay. Let's see. would so move we sign the uh, Department of Criminal Justice grant for $93,482. Is that with the state of Colorado? Yeah. Colorado yeah. Division of Criminal Justice Office of the Adult and Juvenile Justice Assistance. Second. Been moved and seconded to sign the criminal Justice grant in the amount of $93,482 um, as it pertains to radios and radar. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, now we have a discussion and decision, decision as it's related to the free out of fights. 
And I don't know that there's really anything to decide today. I don't think so. so okay. We will go right by, right by that. Uh, into new business, Ms. Frizzell, we have a uh, liquor license. It's Jerry Frizzell. <coughs> I do the county liquor license renewals and new applications. I have a transfer of ownership for a Booze Stop LLC. Address is 18794 Highway 491 in Lewis. And they have all their documents in order. So this is a, this is just a transfer? Yep, they bought so Cox it's not Conicos. A new they bought okay. Cox Conicos, so it's just transferring the liquor license from Cox to them. Okay. So it's not a new one, just right. a transfer. I was looking at the address and I was like, where can this be? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I moved to approve this transfer of ownership of a liquor license to Booze Stop LLC at 18794 Highway 491, Lewis, Colorado. Second. The move in seconded to accept and sign the transfer of ownership uh, retail license application to Boo Stop LLC located at 18794 Highway 491 Lewis, Colorado. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, well, with that, we'll go into uh, our attorney's report, Mr. McLaren. So, um, last Wednesday, I was involved in a mediation with the Fair Board um, uh, for quite a few hours, and uh, ultimately that mediation proved unsuccessful. And so, um, coming out of that mediation, we will um, re-engage in the complaint process and and respond to that and, and move forward. Uh, so uh, that was what it was. It was certainly a good faith effort, I think, on both sides, and, and that's where we ended up. So um, <coughs> Ironwood um, had multiple calls with um, Council for Ironwood and the state. Um, at this point, <coughs> um, Ironwood's in a situation where they don't have they're, they they basically don't have the financial resources to continue to uh, mitigate out of the pile at this time. Um, and so that's where we stand. Um, the fines remain in place. Um, the state and the county will move forward with requests for uh, liens. And we are in that process right now. Those will be filed by the end of the week and then we'll, uh, we'll go forward from there. Um, you know, obviously, um, that the st I think I can represent the, both the state and the county um, are hopeful that um, that work will continue out there, that work will resume, that things will continue to be cleaned up. Um, there is still fire danger there, um, and that that has been conveyed to to Council for Ironwood, and so um, that's where we're at at this point in time. Uh, other than that, I don't have anything to report. Okay, thank you. All right, Travis, County Administrator. Uh, last week uh, was spent mostly at CCI in Denver. Uh, a lot of good information, a lot of good uh, breakout sessions, uh, a lot of discussion about the uh, property tax bill. On Thursday when we uh, come back, we went through our budget and, and uh, went over with a fine tooth comb. Uh, I know next week that we was looking to uh, have it on the, the budget on the agenda, but because of the timelines that's been pushed back by the state and the treasurer and assessor, uh, we'll probably push our, our budget 
uh, meeting back as well, budget hearing back as well. Okay. Commissioner Lindsay. Yes, uh, I didn't report last week because we didn't have a meeting, but uh, the city of Cortez had their meeting that I attended and a lot of just housekeeping stuff, uh, supported some grants and bought some chemicals for the pools and supported an application grant for the city and the state for the historical society and that was a about the gist of it. And then uh, we'll report on later, but did attend CCI this last week. Okay. Commissioner Bill Banker. Um, yeah, this past week we I attended CCI also. There was some good sessions there. Uh, at the very end of the sessions, I attended a round table type discussion most of the discussion was about the fact that the city and county of Denver, uh, it's about 500,000. Basically, they passed a resolution or got a, enough signatures on to get a measure on the ballot to do away with any processing plants or slaughterhouses in the city and county of Denver. Well, there's a sheep processing plant that's right by the uh, grounds for the National Western Stock Show. It's been there forever. It's an employee-owned business. Probably right at 200 people work there. And basically, with the, with the voter turnout in the city and county of Denver, they're putting it on the presidential ballot, so there'll be a huge turnout. And I'm sure there will be some really ugly displays of what happens when animals are slaughtered and stuff to get people to vote this out of the city and county of Denver. But it's not a good situation. Most of the people that actually live there in Denver and around there don't even know it's there because there's all the animals are hauled in there. They're under certain restrictions as to how many they can haul in a truck. And the trucks come in there only at certain times of day. They're unloaded, it's totally enclosed. There's nothing to the outside. It's, it's just a, a sad situation that something that's been there for, I, I'm guessing close to the 100 of years. <laughs> and it's employee owned and they're gonna take it away from them. That's, basically with yeah, a that's vote a of the people. And it's just. <laughs> that's a taking. I mean, clear and simple. It, it, it seems like it should be to me, but those people should I, be I don't know legally where that where that stands, where the people I mean, vote not, to do away with it. But that's to me. That's it's not. It's it's going to be ugly, and it's and you know when you look at it, to me, that's just their starting point. They're going to just. I mean, pretty soon it'll be in Boulder and it'll be in Greeley, and those industries actually created most of that whole front range area and it's it's just i don't know i hadn't heard about it until that session when we were discussing that right there at the very end after i think you guys had actually left yeah. by then and i stayed there and that it was a it's kind of an eye-opener to the what's going on up there um after that i did go on up to loveland and Wednesday evening gave a talk to the Colorado Ag Water Alliance group. Um, I was not familiar with their group at all, but it's mainly farmers and stuff in that Greeley, Loveland, Longmont, Fort Collins area uh, over this Colorado River task force stuff that's going on. Uh, we will have our vote this Thursday as to what we're going to move forward suggestions to the legislatures, what some things that Colorado needs to help with as far as our drought situation. So that's going to help happen this next Thursday in Denver. All right. Very good. Um, <clears throat> as you've already heard, we were all, all three 
up in Denver uh, at CCI. Um, one of the best meetings that I thought we had that we all three were in attendance was our Western District meeting, which uh, a lot of the conversation that we had in there was, uh, um, was about water and drought and infrastructure, which Commissioner Copenhaver uh, sits on that task force um, that has been newly created. And I, I think they'll, there will be some good recommendations come out of there in that task force. So um, pretty, pretty interesting discussion in there. Um, Senator uh, Bennett's office was represented, was represented there. Um, Congresswoman Lauren Boebert's um, aide was there. Yeah. And uh, did I miss? I think those are the only two those in there, the right? Two. The Attorney General um, showed up. The Attorney General showed up. Uh, Secretary of State. Secretary of State. Anyway, it was it was a pretty. Um, I think it was about a three-hour meeting in there. Yeah. Uh, we had a lot of a lot of people come in and, and talk about a lot of different things, but water obviously was the height of that. To finish off that, um, we all went to to a tax. <laughs> To, to a tax meeting, um, the state's guru on taxing was there to answer all the questions that we all had because after this special session that just finished up, nobody has any clue of what's going on and that's around the state. Um, the only thing that we do know is that the RAR is, is uh, reduced by basically one half of 1% and the $55,000 reduction is going to take place for um, the property uh, property owners instead of the fifteen thousand dollar reduction. Um, it is going to be a it is going to be a negative impact to us here at the county. That's why we came back and started back basically with another round of, of budgets um, to figure out what we are and are we are not going to do. And obviously, as asked before, there will be a public hearing when we actually do get time to put that budget now again forward. One other comment that I do want to address also, and I'm not sure where the 300 units that we had signed up with DOA came from. Um, it could have been the baseline as we've talked about it. You guys have all heard us talk about it, Proposition 123. Um, we had that conversation uh, of opting in or opting out. Uh, we felt that it was better for us to opt in. It does not some it does not mean that we are going to build 300 affordable units at all. It was a baseline. We told the state their baseline was incorrect and undoable, um, specifically in rural America. Now in the front range, you have some big developers that might be able to pull that off, but um, rural America cannot do that. So the baselines were changing, but that um, basically is a um, proposition one, two, three sign on that we opted in because we did not want to hurt uh, anybody else that was doing projects specifically like the pinion project and the project that they were doing over off of empire street and we did not want to harm them uh, there are restrictions to that and obviously the unincorporated part of montezuma county will uh, have to sit out that that one year because obviously we will not be able to meet the standards of the new baselines being set by the state um, so just to make the record clear, we are not building 300 affordable housing units in an unincorporated part of Montezuma County. We did opt in to Proposition 123. <coughs> um, we came back, very busy day Thursday. Um, we uh, um, went to a press conference. Um, to support our city of Cortez and the tragedy that we have had in front of us and that continues to face us. Uh, we then had a, a, a little bit lighter rest of the afternoon as we went out and opened up the Alkali Creek Bridge uh, out on County Road N. If you have not been out there, go look at it, look at the pictures. Uh, they're posted, CDOT was also out there. Um, they put out a Google, a Google Drive and there are a lot of photos out there too. It's a great bridge, um, and it should be there for a long period of time. One other thing that I would like to highlight is yesterday, our road superintendent was here. Um, we, we finally put to work a, 
I'm going to call it a box culvert or a not sure what Moth I call plate. it. Um, uh, in into uh, um, work, uh, Travis, are you pulling that up? Yes, sir. It really turned out real well on Road 36. We had a lot of uh, flooding up there. If you guys can see these photos, this is what we were faced with this spring because of the flooding. Um, the culverts were basically washed out, and we had another washout of a road uh, up there. This is some of the photos of of the concrete work going into place. Um, the application of the culvert itself, and it creates about a 24, I think is that 21 foot width yeah. and six foot height. So it's kind of a mini bridge or a box culvert. Uh, this was purchased. You guys have probably heard us talk about it before and had been sitting out in our county yard since about 27, 2007 or 2008. Two, Commissioner Copenhaver had the opportunity to purchase it many years ago. <laughs> Uh, we've actually now put it put it to work. Uh, another great project that we um, were able to get done because of some of the flooding issues that we had this spring. Um, one more thing that I highlighted yesterday, and I'd like to highlight it again today. We did have some emails um, come to us that that asked why our road department was not out plowing snow on a Friday if they only worked four days and that was all they did. That is not what they do. They do have an application of snow. It has to be uh, typically a minimum of four inches before they can get out. They do sand the roads if it requires it. Just because they work four tens does not mean they're not working every day of the week, specifically when it snows. So just to make that clarification, um, they, they are out there working all the time as it's necessary and I think with that well I uh, just like to ask add for these guys on that property tax stuff uh, that we attended the special districts in the school district qualify for backfill and guess who doesn't Montezuma County so we, we we're like uh, Commissioner Candelaria said we we're gonna take a hit but uh, also uh, were tax bills going to be delayed going out? So I think everything, so our budget extends to January 10th, I believe, yeah. before we have to now have it approved because obviously our assessor is having to re-input everything by hand because the software system that we have right now is not compatible because nothing is compatible. Um, so everything has been extended, but Travis, I think if you have yeah. the dates. I have the timeline, Commissioner, if you want me to. Yeah. Please. please. So January 3rd of 2024 is a final certification by county assessors of values uh, to local governments. January 10th, local government submits levies to the commissioners. Again, January 10th, adoption of the budget. January 17th, uh, commissioners are to certify levies. January 24th is tax roll delivered to treasurer as soon as possible and treasurer sends tax bills. Yeah. There, so. there was a question posed to the lady guru of the state property tax bunch up there. And when the question was posed, she didn't have an answer. She says, I don't know. And there was this calm, it wasn't a calm, it was a, it just went really quiet in that room. And nobody, I mean, this is a mess. And not of our making. We didn't do this. <laughs> neither, neither did our assessor. <laughs> there, was, there was not just one question that she was asked that then she could started. not answer. Yeah. There was several that she, that she was asked that she could not answer. She thought it would be this way, but she was not sure. One of the questions was... I, 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 no, it, it's a mess. We, I mean, it we is. definitely... Are trying to figure it out and we don't have it so we go to ask the questions and the people that are supposed to have the answers don't have the answers so it's uh it's gonna be a challenge like I said we we put together a budget and now we are redoing a budget because we know that we are going to have a negative impact to our uh, to our income and that's that's really it in a nutshell somebody asked if there was a worksheet that we could go off of 
and she said that Dola had it, and I looked over at the Dola guy, and he's doing this. He, he didn't know. He was sure on the phone after the meeting. So I, I tell you what, it, I've never seen anything like this. Motion to adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn this December 5th, 2023 meeting. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.